The Commodore 64, now in a home family pack. A family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer. Underworld was the second game in the series of the Sabermen Adventures, and was a great conversion of one of the big ultimate play the game hits for the ZX Spectrum. And, even though many will have found this game pretty frustrating to play, I believe it definitely stands the test of time remarkably well. The conversion does do the original full justice, although, admittedly, only minimal attempts were made to exploit the Commodore's superior capabilities. The effectiveness of Ultimate's original graphics and game design will be enough to satisfy most people. Unlike Saberwolf, Underworld contains a surprising number of elements which hadn't been copied to death by other software houses at the time. Take, for example, the role of the various strange enemy creatures you encounter. Instead of killing you or sapping your energy on contact, here they simply knock you on your head and bounce you around the place, which is probably where the frustration could maybe kick in, as the majority of the time this would mean preventing you from going where you wanted to. Death only really happened if you was knocked off a ledge and fell to a great distance. Set within a castle, perched on top of a massive labyrinth of underground passages, you take the role of Saberman and have to escape by finding a route through the passages and tracking down the correct weapons required to get rid of the three different guardians who block your path. No clues were given, however, as to which weapon will kill each guard. So it was up to you to work that out, and then locate where the Guardians were. As always with these types of games, mapping was pretty much essential. It's a huge game, so definitely plenty to keep the cartographers going. However, thanks to Oliver Frey, who drew this awesome detailed map, you can also see that he made a note at the bottom, that the beetle is killed with the dagger, a demon with the boar, and the devil with the fire torch. It always amazed me just how much detail were put into these game maps, which usually included all of the little icons for items which could be found dotted around. Amazing. The playing area is split into two distinct sections comprising of the castle and the caverns, although the two merge into one another. Flicking screens as you move from one to the other adds to the suspense element, and you are given pretty much no indication of what lies ahead. The castle screens are bright and colourful with objects such as tables, clocks, pictures and eagle crests, all of which serve as platforms for you to leap onto as you make progress. In the earth yellow screens of the underworld, jagged rock ledges serve the same function. Although Saberman is a tough and resilient character, as mentioned earlier, you will lose a life if you fall more than a screen and a half, and Underworld has been cleverly constructed so that lives are swiftly lost. Luckily, there are much needed extra lives which can be found, but they are pretty few and far between. But that's where the map will come in handy. Travelling up and down the vertical shafts is by no means easy. Ornaments such as clocks, birds and flower baskets are littered around the screen and it is by jumping from one to the other that you can make your way from screen to screen. The caverns on the other hand are completely different. Again, the layout comprises deep shafts with a few horizontal connections, but getting from one screen to another needs a totally different approach. If you arrive at the top of a shaft then just walk off it, Saberman automatically does a huge jump and hooks a rope to the ceiling. You can then lower him down and drop off at the bottom. You can go back up in a similar fashion if there is a rope present, and when you reach the top can swing yourself back onto land safely. However, if you find yourself at the bottom of the shaft without a rope, then you have to make use of gaseous bubbles that emerge from the craters on the floor. If you stand on a crater long enough, then a bubble rises and you ride it to the top of the shaft. Simply jump off the ledge at the top when you get there, because if you stay on too long, you'll be carried to the ceiling where the bubble will burst, sending you all the way down to the bottom. Frustrating times. Harpies and gargoyles live in the underworld, travelling around creating havoc for Sabermen. Unusually, as mentioned, they don't kill, but knock you around a fair bit. Luckily, you're not defenceless, and a couple of well-aimed shots from the weapon you carry destroys them. Later on in the game, the eagles emerge. These are the biggest pests of all, because they lift you off the ground where you hang helpless in their talons until they drop you usually down a very steep shaft, 
where you will experience the wee splat syndrome. Underworld is huge with over 500 rooms, so definitely keep your eye on a map if you intend to play this through. Although there is a link to this style of map on the description, which not only simplifies the screens, but also shows you exactly whereabouts the weapons could be and the exact locations of the guardians too. Always helpful. There's something about this game that always keeps me coming back for more. It's got the right balance between total frustration and maddening addiction. The Commodore 64 version does look almost identical to the Spectrum, but I'm sure you will agree, it has clearer, smoother graphics, plays slightly faster, and is more difficult than the original. Maybe Firebird should have tweaked the main sprite and added some flesh colours, but to be honest, it would have probably just ruined the game. Which, as it stands, is still very, very good. If you want a superlative arcade adventure, then go and give Underworld a try. You'll either love it or hate it. That much is for certain. Either way, let me know in the comments section. Thanks for watching, guys. This will be part of a mini series covering the Saberman games, which will include Saber Wolf in which Saberman must escape a large jungle maze by collecting four pieces of an amulet, while avoiding the titular wolf. And also Nightshade, where you assume the role of a knight who enters the plague-infested village of Nightshade to vanquish four demons who reside within. This may not necessarily be part of the Saberman series, but as we didn't get night lore on the Commodore 64, it's worth checking out this wonderfully detailed game. Stick around if you'd like to see those videos too by hitting subscribe to ensure yourself of being notified of those and other upcoming videos on the channel. With plenty more nostalgic games already listed on the channel playlist and more coming daily, it would be great for you to join me on this epic journey down memory lane. Also, don't forget to check out the other series of games from Ultimate Play the Game concerning a certain Sir Arthur Pendragon, all of which are on the channel playlist. Well, that was Underworld, and once again I'd like to say thank you for your continued support, and genuinely look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Until then, bye for now. Just want to take a moment to thank the following patrons. It's massively appreciated that you're supporting the channel, covering the games we love. Stay retro.